Hey there, the math dog here. So in this video, I'm going to look at dividing fractions and introduction to that topic. So you should be somewhat familiar with multiplying fractions before you watch this video. So let's get started. So first I'm going to review reducing fractions to lowest or simplest terms. So I'm going to use a multiplication example here. So you could multiply it all out and then reduce it, like this would be 20 over 300. You could do it that way, because 12, 25 times 12 is 300. But, and then reduce it a step at a time. I mean, you could do like this, 20 over 300. And you're okay, well, okay, I know that this 10 goes in there, 10 goes into there. So 10 goes into both those, for example. Um, and then that would be two over 30, but then I could go further, I could go two, they're both even numbers, so I could get 1 15th. So that's, certainly you can do it that way, but I'm gonna just demonstrate another way. So notice here, this is four, this really is four times five over 25 times 12. So I could reduce to four twelfths here, four goes into four once, four goes into 12 three times, and then five twenty-fifths, five goes to five one time, five goes to 25 five times, so I get 1 15th. So you could do it either way, but I'm showing you, just reminding you there's a couple ways you can do this. So now the second example, I really don't feel like multiplying out unless I absolutely had to, but I don't because um, 9 45ths here, I could divide 9 into 9 goes once, 9 goes into 45 five times, and then 6 40 seconds, 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes to 42 seven times. So this ends up reducing to 1 35th, which to me it would be a lot nicer than going six times nine is 54 and then whatever 45 times 42 is, which I don't know off the top of my head. So let's have you do a practice on this. So stop the video, reduce these two um, fractions that are multiplied to lowest terms, the answer or the product. All right, so let's see what you got here. So um, the first one, 7 35ths. Well, I can divide 7 into both those. That goes 5 times, goes once. 3 39 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes 39 13 times. So this ends up being 7 over 65. Okay. So then the second one, um, right here, 3 27ths. I can divide 3 into 3 once. 3 goes to 27 9 times. And then four goes into four once, four goes 125 times. So now I have one over 25 times nine. That's 18 times, 18 plus four is 22, so that's 225. So that's one over 225 is our final answer there. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so I'm gonna look at a couple ways to interpret division, particularly of fractions, but just division in general. So one way is, for example, six divided by three. You could think of this as you're breaking six up into three equal parts. Okay, so I've got six blocks here, each one equals one. So I'm breaking it up into three equal parts. Okay, well, what we're gonna find is the size of each part, and that's gonna be two. So we've got three equal parts here. We're dividing into three equal parts, and each one of those parts is two, and that's what in the quotient is. Quotient is the result of a division problem. So our answer is two, okay? A second, so one way of thinking of division, again, is breaking up the number, this divided by three is telling you how many times you wanna break up six, okay? So the second way to interpret division is like eight divided by four. How many fours fit into eight? Okay, so I've got eight pieces here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four pieces is right here. Okay, you can see that four pieces, these four pieces of four fit into eight twice. Okay, so it's two pieces of four fit into eight. So the answer would be two. So we're going to use both of these interpretations to help explain what's going on when we divide fractions. Okay, so I have a box model for dividing fractions. I'm going to show two ways to think of this first one. The first one is the first example. So I'm going to think of this as break one half into three equal parts. Okay. 
and the answer is going to be the size of each part. So this is representing one whole, this is a half. So what I'm do is I'm divide it into three equal parts. Okay, so here's a half right here. Okay, in terms of one, these are sixths, because I could continue that process here, divide this other half into three equal parts. So when I break a half into three equal parts, the size of each part is this right here. So this has to be, this is one out of six. These aren't exactly right the way I put them here. These are supposed to be all equal size. So that is one sixth, okay? Now, notice that we can get that result without having to go through a diagram here. I can go, what we do when we divide fractions is we go one half divided by three, which is three over one. And what we do is we change what we're dividing by. We take, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we change division to multiplication and we flip this upside down and we get one sixth. I will show later why this works this way, but this is the way that we're going to do it. I'm just trying to demonstrate why this is one six using the dividing into equal parts method. So second way to look at this one is again, the problem is one half divided by three. So I'm going to interpret this method as how many threes or how does three or what part of three fits into one half? How many threes fit into one half fit in this or, or what part of three fits into one half? Okay, so here is three. I'm representing three by these boxes. Each box is one. So this is a half, okay? So you notice that um, if I subdivide this further, or if I divide these other boxes the way I did the first one, I can get my pen here. There we go. So notice there are one, two, three, four, five, six parts here. Well, if this is a half, this is a half. Notice this is just one part out of six that fit. So only one sixth of three fits in there. So that is going to be, again, one sixth. And again, once again, the way we're gonna do this is, okay, we can write that divided by three over one. So we're going to then take the reciprocal change it to multiplication and take the reciprocal, which gives us one sixth. Okay, another example. So one half divided by a quarter. So I've drawn a half here. So I'm gonna do this, how many quarters fit into a half? Well, this is a quarter of one right here, okay? So how many quarters fit into a half? Well, each of these is a quarter, there's two of them. So the answer is gonna be two, okay? So again, you've got a total of one, two, three, four quarters. Well, two quarters fit into a half. So again, using the division algorithm, al algorithm is a method, a process of solving something. So the algorithm's gonna be one half divided by a quarter equals one half, change division to multiplication, and then take the reciprocal. So that's going to be 4 over 2, but that equals 2. Okay, let's do another example. So 2 thirds divided by 1 half. So let me come back here a second. So I asked how many 1 quarters fit into 1 half. I like to talk out talk out to myself what division of fractions means. It makes it easier to, for me to see what's going on. So this next example, I have two thirds divided by one half. So I'm going to interpret this as how many one halves fit into two thirds. OK, 
Okay, well, two-thirds. I've broken, this is one hole. I've broken it up into two-thirds of a hole. So let me shade that. So this is a third. This is a third, making a total of two-thirds here. Now, a half of the hole will be right here. So I'll draw, I'll split the hole into a half here. Then I will outline that half and I'll use yellow. So here is a half of the hole. Now notice the half doesn't cover the entire two thirds. I still need this area here. But let's look at this. So this is a half of a third this also right here would be a half of a third so notice to cover this i need one two three four pieces okay notice this is a half again i need three of these pieces to make a half so each one of these is a third of a half and since each of these pieces is one third of a half I need one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds pieces of a half to complete, to fill in the two thirds that I started with. So the answer is going to be one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds. So the answer is four thirds. Using the algorithm, that's going to be two thirds divided by one half. You change two thirds, you change that division to multiplication, and you take the reciprocal, and we get four thirds that way. Okay, here's a practice problem. I'd like you to try to use the box method to represent it, the problem, and the solution, and also just use the algorithm. So stop the video, work the problem, then turn on and check to see if we agree. Okay, so I'm going to do the box method first, the visual. So three-fourths divided by one-half. So I'm asking, my, I'm asking here, how many one-halves fit into three-fourths okay so I've broken this up into four so three-fourths is going to be I'll shade that three-fourths is going to be here okay then how many halves fit into that well here's a half So a half is going to be right here. Okay, so the half is here. Okay, so the thing is though, we need to cover to here. And this is a half of a half. Well, I'm going to need three of those half of a half. So the answer is going to be three halves. Okay. So using the algorithm, we would have 3 fourths divided by half equals 3 fourths times 2 over 1 because I change division and multiplication and then I take the reciprocal, I flip 1 half upside down. That gives me, I'm going to write that as 6 fourths this time, but that can be reduced because I can divide 2 into both 6 and 4 and then I get my 3 halves. Okay. So now let's talk about the rule for dividing fractions. So this would actually be a mathematical theorem. So let's derive the rule here though. So division means a fraction bar is another way of representing division. So this problem here, I'm gonna use fraction bars. Now I'm gonna make this, instead of writing it as A over B divided by C over D, I'm gonna write A over B divided by C over D this way. So the reason B and D cannot be zero here is because that would be division by zero. And technically, actually, I need to add C also cannot be zero because when you flip it upside down, you would get C in the denominator. So you cannot have division by zero. So we need to add the fact that C also cannot be zero here. So B cannot be zero, D cannot be zero, C cannot be zero. 
So we have now A over B divided by C over D. I'm representing it like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by D over C. Okay, well what's the value of D over C? Well the value of D over C here, that equals one because anything divided by itself is one. So D over C divided by D over C has to be one. So now we are left with, I'm going to multiply this at the top, that's A D over B C all over the big fraction bar here, C D over D C. But now A D over B C, notice that C, C D is the same as D C. So this is one over one, so this just is one, that goes away, so I am left here with my result. So my result of dividing A over B divided by C over D is equal to A D over B C. Okay, and notice that is the same, I get that result if I take the change division to multiplication and take the reciprocal here. Notice that gives me this. This is gonna be AD over BC. So the rule is A over B divided by C over D will equal A over B times D over C. Assuming again that B, D, and C are not zero. So this is the rule for dividing fractions. Okay, you wanna have that memorized so you don't have to go through all the steps every time. You certainly don't wanna use a box model. All right, so let's do some example problems. So 3 sevenths divided by 3 fourths, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite this as 3 sevenths times four over three. Okay, the threes can be canceled out because three goes to three one time. So we end up with four sevenths, okay? Next question, now mixed numbers, okay? To change a mixed number, to an improper frac, we have to change a mixed number to an improper fraction. So this is gonna be one half is one times two plus one is three over two, divided by two times five is 10 plus two is 12 over five. Now I change the, I change the division to multiplication. I take the reciprocal of 12 fifths, which is five twelfths. So now I can reduce this because three goes into three once, three goes into 12 four times, so one times five is five, two times four is eight, so our final result is five over eight. And our last example here, I don't like that color, let me change the color of that. Change that to white so we can see it a little better. All right, so we have three and two thirds divided by two and a quarter. Well, I'm gonna change these both to improper fractions. Three times three is nine plus two is 11, so that's 11 thirds divided by two times four is eight plus one is nine over nine, so we have nine over four. So now to do the problem, I change the division sign to multiplication. I take the reciprocal of nine fourths, which is four ninths, I flip it over, okay? So now this time I have 11 times four is 44, three times nine is 27. That's an improper fraction. That is the correct answer, but I'm gonna change it to a mixed number by dividing the bottom into the top, the denominator and numerator. 27 goes to 44 once. One times 27 is 27. So now I'm gonna make that 14 borrow. So that's gonna be seven, seven, that's gonna be 17. So my answer is a mixed number is one and 17 over 27. Okay, I'd like you to stop the video and do these three practice questions and after you've done them, turn it on and see if you agree with what I got. Okay, so the first one here, this is going to be 5 sevenths, change division to multiplication, flip 4 ninths to 9 fourths. So we get 45 over 28. Well, I'm going to write that as a mixed number. 28 goes into 45. Well, 28 goes to 45 once. 1 times 28 is 28. Borrow, that's 15 minus 8 is 7. So that's 1 and 17, 28 says a mixed number. So in the second one, I change the division to multiplication, re take the reciprocal. So this time I got three over eight times four over seven. Well, I can change four eights. I can divide four into four once, four into eight twice. So three times one is three, two times seven is 14. So we get three fourteenths. 
The next one I gotta change, I'm change my mixed numbers in proper fractions. Three times three is nine plus two is 11 over three divided by five times six is 30 plus one is 31 over six. So now I apply the algorithm. I change division to multiplication and flip 31 six to six thirty first. Okay, so now I have six thirds here. Okay, so six, three goes into six twice, three goes into three once. So I now have 11 times two is 22 and one times 31 is 31. So my answer is 22 over 31. All right, so now let's do some word problems. So if you're a student that has to take, for example, the common core exams like the SBAC or the PARC, you might see questions like this, word questions. And these will be division problems in this case. So suppose you have six and three-fifths pounds of potato salad. How many two-fifths pound servings can you get? So in other words, how many, back to what we were doing a while back, how many two-fifths fit into six and two-thirds? How many two-fifths, so this is going to be division, how many two-fifths fit into six and three-fifths? So this is division. So six and three fifths divided by two fifths. So to do this, that's 30. Six times five is 30 plus three is 33 fifths. Change division multiplication, take the reciprocal there. The fives cancel out, that's one over one. So I end up with 33 halves. But let's write that as a mixed number. Two goes into 33. Well, two goes to three once. One times two is twos. Subtract, bring down the three. Two goes into 13 six times. Six times two is 12. Subtract, you get one. So it is gonna be 16 and one half servings. And each of these servings is going to be two fifths of a pound. Let's do another example. So one half of a cantaloupe is divided equally among four people. So. I guess we could visually do this, but we really don't need to, but I'm going to do a little visual here. So here's a cantaloupe. There's half of the cantaloupe. And I'm dividing it equally among four people. Not a very good job here, but one, two, three, four. So you can see that that's going to be one eighth of the whole. So using division, though, again, we're asking how many times is four going to one half? So this is gonna be four divided by, um, I'm sorry, it's gonna be one half divided by four. So I wrote this wrong, it should, well, no I didn't. It's four into one half, so that's gonna be one half divided by four. So using the algorithm, that's one half times, change division multiplication, change four. Four is four over one. Remember, four can be written as four over one, so reciprocal of four is one fourth. So this gives me one eighth. So one eighth of the cantaloupe goes, the total cantaloupe goes to each person. You can kind of see that because this is four here and there's gonna be four more pieces over here. All right, so now let's look at a container is one third full of milk. Suppose a serving milk is one sixth the size of the container. How many servings of milk are available? Let's actually draw a little picture of this. So I got a sil let's have a, a cylinder container here, okay? So this is like one third full. So this is one third right here, okay? So a serving milk is one sixth the size. Well, if you think about it, let's let's split this up into thirds. So this is empty here, but this is the full part. So now to get a sixth, I just split each third in half. You see you're gonna need one, you're gonna need two of these. So you're gonna have two servings of milk available where serving is one sixth the size container. So again, we're asking how many times does a sixth
fit into one third. So that is the problem, one third divided by one sixth. So change division to multiplication, flip one sixth to six over one and we get six over three, which is two. All right, stop the video and do this question. So one third of a watermelon is shared equally among eight people. What fraction of original watermelon does each person get? So stop the video, work the problem, and then turn it on, see if you agree with what I got. All right, so again, if I make, uh, I'm not gonna even draw a diagram here. So third of a watermelon, I'm, how many times does eight fit into one third is the question here. Okay, so this is going to be one third divided by eight. Well, eight is eight over one. So now change the division to multiplication, take the reciprocal. So each person gets 1 24th of the total watermelon, okay? So now let's look at some problems involving um, area and volume. So. I have an unknown length here, the, the base of this rectangle, or the length of this rectangle is x. The height here is one and a half feet. The total area, which area is base times height, the product of these two. So we're gonna find the volume of, value of x, and I, we're gonna use division, we're gonna use multiplication of fractions here. So the equation I'm gonna write is gonna be to get the area. So again, area of a rectangle is base times height. Okay, so in this case, I don't know what B is, that's my X. But I'm gonna call, I'm gonna switch these around, so I'm gonna, you could also write HB. So I'm gonna write the height here first, one and a half, and my X is unknown. And the area, now I can replace with five and one third feet. So let's now change, we're gonna to have to change these to improper fractions. So five and one third is 16 thirds, okay? And one and a half is one times two plus one is three halves. So I have 16 thirds equals three halves x. So now I'm gonna swap these around to equal sign because I'm allowed to do that. So I'm gonna rewrite this as three halves x equals 16 thirds. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by three halves because I wanna get x by itself, excuse me, x by itself. But dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by two thirds. So again, I just said dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by two thirds. Let's just do a little side demonstration. So again, one divided by three halves. Remember what the algorithm was? It's gonna be one times two thirds. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation. So dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by two thirds. And what you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the others. Well, two thirds, so this two thirds, these brackets mean I'm multiplying both sides by two thirds. Well, this is gonna be six over six, so that goes away. So I'm just left with one X or X. Then over on the right side, I have two thirds times 16 over three. So that's gonna be X is 32 over nine, which you could write as a mixed number. Nine goes to 32 three times, three times nine is 27, subtract, you get five. So this is three and five ninths. What are the units? Well, this is area, and each one of these has got to be feet. The area is square feet, so but actually the x is actually just a dimension, so it's going to be feet only. So it's going to be 3 and 5 ninths feet is the missing dimension there. All right, let's do a similar problem with volume. Volume is going to be defined as length times width times height here. So we have 
length times width times height, that volume is five. So I'm going to write that um, one and a half times three fourths. So length times width times height, the height is unknown, it's x. That's going to equal five. So now change the mixed number to an improper fraction. That's three halves times three fourths times x equals five. So now let's multiply this out. That's nine eighths x equals five. So like in the last problem, multiplying by nine eighths is the same as dividing by eight ninths. So I'm going to so I am going to divide both sides by 9 eighths, which is the same as multiplying by 8 ninths. So I'm going to do like I did in the last problem. So this all this is 72 over 72 when you multiply this. So that becomes 1. So we're just left with x. And on the right side, I have 8 ninths times 5. Now I'm going to write 5 is 5 over 1. It's the same thing. So I get x is 40 ninths. And that's going to be feet. So let's change that to an improper fraction. 9 goes into 40. 4 times, 4 times 9 is 36, subtract, I get 4, so it's going to be 4 and 4 ninths feet is the height of this rectangular prism, or we call it usually a box in layman's terms. Alright, so last thing in this video, do this problem here, so I've given you a box, so the volume is 8 cubic meters. Height is x, we don't know what it is. This is two and a quarter meters, this is two thirds meters. Find the value of x. Then stop the video and see if you get what I did. Okay, so let's set an equation up here. I've got um, two and a quarter. So this volume is length times width times height times two thirds times x. That has to equal eight cubic meters. So this is going to be two times four plus one is nine fourths times two thirds times x equals 8. So that's going to be, here I can reduce this down quite a bit in this problem because 9, let's just do that. That's going to be 9 and 3, that's 3 over 1. 2 fourths, I can divide 2 into both those, goes in once there, twice there. So that's just going to be 3 halves x equals 8. So I'm going to divide by 3 halves, but that's the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. So now this is 1, so I get x equals 2 thirds times 8, so I get, and that's a 3 there, so I get x is 16 thirds meters. As a mixed number, 3 goes into 16 5 times, 5 times 1 is 15, subtract, that's 1. So as a mixed number, that's 5 and 1 third meters high. The unknown is x, that's the height, is 5 and 1 third meters. Okay, this concludes the video. If you found it informative and you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and please consider cons subscribing to my YouTube channel, The Math Dog. You may share the content of this video with others. Thank you very much and have a good day.